In this video, we're going to learn about simple and fractional distillation. So we'll cover how simple distillation can separate out a liquid from a solution, but also how fractional distillation can separate mixtures of liquids. Let's start with simple distillation, which is used for separating out a liquid from a solution. As an example, we could use simple distillation to separate pure water from seawater. Before we cover how it works though, we need to be familiar with the equipment. First, we have a flask that contains the solution or the liquid mixture that we're trying to separate. And the flask is sealed at the top with a bung so that no gases can escape. We then put a thermometer in through the bung so that we can measure the temperature inside the flask. Next, we have our condenser, which consists of a main pipe surrounded by a water jacket which contains a stream of continually flowing cold water, with the water being fed into the water jacket at the bottom and coming out at the top. Then beneath the end of our condenser, we'll have some sort of beaker to capture our pure liquid. And finally, we're going to need some sort of heating device, like a Bunsen burner, which we place underneath the flask. Now our first step is to heat up the mixture so that the liquid that we want to separate out evaporates. As it rises to the top of the flask, the pressure will force it down the condenser, and because we're pumping cold water through the water jacket, the vapor will cool and condense into liquid form. It will then run down the pipe and collect in the beaker. So in our case, as we heat the seawater, we'll get more and more pure distilled water until eventually all we have left in the flask is salt. Now imagine instead that we're trying this technique with a different mixture. One containing some different liquids, like methanol, ethanol and propanol. Because these liquids all have similar boiling points, when we heat them, more than one of them will evaporate at the same time, and so they won't be separated into pure substances. So in this case, you'd have to use a different technique called fractional distillation which is the main technique used for separating mixtures of liquids. The equipment for this is pretty similar, but instead of the gas being passed straight from the flask into the condenser, the dathas have to first pass through a fractionating column, which has two key features. One is that it's full of little glass rods, which provide a really high surface area. And the other is that because the column is so tall, it's actually cooler at the top than it is at the bottom. To understand why this is important, let's imagine that we were trying to separate those three liquids we mentioned before, methanol, ethanol, and propanol, which all have similar boiling points, but be aware you don't need to remember them. And before we continue, also be aware that in real life, these would all be colorless, not green. We're just showing them as green to make it a bit easier to follow along. Now, because methanol has the lowest boiling point, we'd heat the mixture to around 65 degrees Celsius first. This would cause the methanol to evaporate and then rise up the fractionating column. It would then pass into the condenser and condense into liquid methanol, which would then collect in our beaker. However, just by chance, some of the ethanol and maybe even propanol would also evaporate at the same time. But as they rise up the fractionating column and come into contact with all of these little glass rods, which are much cooler than their boiling point, they'd condense back into liquid form and then fall back into the flask. This means that the only liquid that will get out the other side will be pure methanol. Then the next step would be to do the same thing all over again, but for ethanol, by raising the temperature to around 78 degrees Celsius, which would allow us to evaporate off the ethanol. At this point, all that should be left is propanol. So we could just assume that what we have in the flask is pure propanol, or we could raise the temperature again to boil off the propanol just to make sure. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. 
So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.